Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about programming language questions of the year 2014, 13 and 11 asked in ISTRO scientist engineer computer science uh, paper. Let's move on to the questions. Okay. In this question we have a pseudocode. Okay, uh, we have initialized x is equal to 1, i is equal to 1 and there is a while loop and we have to find the value of i at the end of the loop uh, at the end of the pseudocode. So see, uh, the while loop uh, runs while x is less than or equal to 500 and we here we are t uh, talking about 2 to the power x. That is x would start from, uh, I will have two variables that is x and i. x is 2 to the power x and i is i plus plus. Okay, now uh, for first one, first iteration, x uh, x is equal to 1, 1 is less than 500, the value of x would be 2 to the power 1, so it is 2 and i would be 1 plus 1, 2. Okay, for the second iteration, the value of x would be 2 to the power x, that is 2 to the power 2 and value of i would be i plus 1, that is 3. Okay, for the next iteration, it would be 2 to the power 4. 2 to the power 4 and the value of i would be 4 and for the next iteration it would be 2 to the power 2 to the power 4 is what 16 okay so it would be 2 to the power 16 and the value of i would be 5 okay and for the next iteration see 2 to the power 4 16 is less than 5000 or 500 okay so we have taken in this but 2 to the power uh, 16 sorry 2 to the power 4 is less than 500 so we have taken this but 2 to the power 16 it would be greater than 500 so this time the loop terminates when the loop ends the value of i is 5 so b should be our option and this is the answer okay next question okay in java after executing the following code what are the values of x y and z okay so we have to find the final values of x y and z and we have initialized x uh, we haven't initialized x we have initialized y with 10 and we have initialized z with 12 and this is our statement okay so we have to find the values of x y and z so we have xy, x here, y here and z here initially uh, y is 10 and z is 12 okay so we have x is equal to it is y plus plus that is you would be using the value of y and then incrementing it so you would be using the current value of y that is 10 and then I would be incrementing the value of y so y becomes 11 okay and in the next case we have to add it we have to add it now we have z plus plus that is we are using the value of z first that is 12 okay and after that we are incrementing the value of z it so it would become 13 it's okay so our answer would be 22 11 and 13 so it is d d is our answer 22 11 and 13 okay next question okay what is the output of the following c code we have a c code we have a integer variable index it is initialized to 1 and it would uh, run till it is less than equal to 5 okay and uh, we have we are incrementing index okay uh, we are printing index and if index is equal to 3 continue okay here we have to remember one thing that is what uh, here the thing which makes a difference is the continue statement okay the continue statement is if uh, this if this condition is true so instead of executing the statement after continue it will go for incrementing the loop variable that is the loop would be uh, um, executed uh, from the beginning okay but now in this case there is no statements after continue no statements after continue so this is of no use because the print statement what we have we are printing the value of index and this statement is before the continue statement before the continue so it would make no effect so the answer would be the same it would this is uh, what would be if this two lines are not there if the two lines are not there it would have the same answer also for example for index i is equal to 1 i is less than 5 index plus plus so it would print 1 first then it would print 2 in the second loop it would print 3 in the second third loop third iteration 4 and 5 so answer would be 1 2 3 4 5 because the continue the continue statement is uh, after the print statement 
so it would have no effect because there are no statement after continue so this would be answer 1 2 3 4 5 that is b okay next question find the output of the following code line okay so we have here system dot order print line it is we are using the math function floor dot 7.8 so you should know what is floor okay if we if i have 7.4 floor uh, floor of 7.4 so it is that we would be taking the lowest integer so integer lowest to 7.4 the immediate lower integer is 7 okay uh, if, if I take uh, uh, 9.6 so the lower integer is 9 so I will take 9 for floor of uh, this if, I, if it is 9.999 then also the floor of 9.99 would be 9 okay but now here the value of 7 is a negative okay so in case of minus 7.4 the just smallest integer after this it would be minus 8 not 7 because there is the value negative sign over here so answer would be minus 8 okay next question consider the following pseudocode okay we have a pseudocode we have two integers 1 and 2 and there is a procedure x plus y okay and uh, and there is a procedure second there is a procedure first so we have a procedure first we have the procedure second and we have a procedure add okay so what uh, so we are calling the first first and right integer x so we are uh, what does it print if the language uses dynamic scoping so uh, with deep binding so we should know what is deep binding and dynamic scoping deep binding means the value of the argument will be assigned while calling the function whenever I call a function then only the value of function will be assigned dynamic scoping means each identifier has a global stack of bindings and the occurrence of identifier is searched in the most recent binding okay so this is what dynamic uh, binding scoping and deep binding is so let's see with uh, this question okay uh, integer first is called okay so when first is called see first is called okay when first is called y is initialized to 3 okay then we are what we are doing is uh, second add is called here second add second is called and the procedure add is passed as the argument the procedure add is passed, passed as the argument so when this is called this is uh, done with then x is initialized to 2 and we would be adding 3 and 2 okay so the answer would be 5 okay next question consider the following c code okay we have a c code over here uh, and uh, here we have a double pi it is a double variable we have an integer which is a equal to 1 and we have a counter i initialized here i and the loop would run for i equal to uh, 0 1 2 and 3 0 to 3 okay we here we have a code okay so whenever this condition is true one would be printed whenever this condition is false then mm, zero would be printed okay so this is our uh, question so okay i we would be having the loop for i is equal to zero okay for i is equal to zero if i is zero see if i is zero we have i by two over here cos pi i by two so it would be cos zero so we would have cos zero in the loop and cos zero is one which is equal to a okay so one would be printed okay now let's next for i is equal to one so we would be having here cos i is equal to one pi into one by two that it is pi by two so cos pi by two is zero so a is equal to zero a is equal to zero so zero would be printed over here okay so like this uh, we would have next that is i is equal to 3 so we have cos pi cos pi so i is equal to 2 sorry uh, so if it is equal to 2 so it is cos pi which is equal to minus 1 so it is a integer value only so it would return 1 okay so it is less than or equal to 3 so 1 0 1 and 2 would be the loop so the answer is 1 0 1 so this is C is our option over here 101.
ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ द आउटपुट ऑफ द फॉलोइंग प्रोग्राम में प्रोग्राम ओके पब्लिक स्टडी इट इज अ जावा कोड वी हैव अ क्लास टेस्ट एंड इन द मेन फंक्शन वी हैव टू इंटीजर वेरिएबल एक्स एंड वाई इनिशियलाइज टू जीरो एंड हियर वी हैव अ लूप वेरिएबल लूप काउंटर जेड प्लस प्लस एंड दिस इज सम कोड okay and we have to find the output and in the end we are printing x and y the final value of x and y we are printing so let's see uh, this loop would run from 0 to 4 0 1 2 3 4 so i'll write it for x is equal to 0 okay z is equal to 0 when z is equal to 0 see it is plus plus x so means we are incrementing the value of x first and then using it so x is initially the value of x so i'll be writing it as x over here y over here okay so when there is a or condition when there is a or condition if this condition is false then only this condition would be checked okay but if the first condition is true so in case of or, or statement if we have condition 1 or condition 2 when condition 1 is true condition 1 is true so we won't be checking condition 2 because it is an or If condition one is false, then only I would be checking condition two. Okay, so this is the concept for this question. So let's see. Uh, for z is equal to zero, we would be having x is equal to one. <coughs> Sorry, x is equal to one because we are incrementing the value of x first, and then we are comparing with 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 two. Is x greater than two? No, it is not. So first condition. my first condition is false so i would be checking the second condition okay in a second condition we have plus plus y that is we are incrementing the value of y first okay and then and after that uh, we are so in this case x is equal to 1 you have to remember this we are incrementing the value of y first so y is equal to 1 after that we are comparing it with be 2 so this is also false okay so in this case x is equal to 1 y is equal to Sorry, x is equal to two and y is equal to two. Sorry, x is equal to one. Sorry, x is equal to one and y is equal to one. Y is equal to one and x is equal to one. So okay, for z is equal to one, uh, when z is one, z plus plus s x we are incrementing the value of x first. So uh, when we increment the value of x first, so condition was false. Both the condition was false. So we are moving to other. count okay uh, when the value of uh, x is incremented so here x becomes 2 okay is 2 greater than 2 no so it is false then second condition would be checked y is equal to 2 is 2 greater than 2 false so y is equal to 2 here y is equal to 2 and x is also equal to 2 let's check for z is equal to 2 so now here x would be incremented by 1 Okay, because we are incrementing first and then checking x is equal to three greater than two. Okay, this condition is true, so we won't be checking this condition. So here y would remain two and x would become three. Okay, x would become three. So this is the question. X would become sorry. X was be uh, if x is greater than two, then what we are uh, this condition becomes true. That that means this loop would be executed. so we would be incrementing the value of x by 1 that is x plus plus so in this case x would become 4 because we are incrementing the value of x okay now, now next next for a, z is equal to 3 when we have z is equal to 3 x is equal to 4 plus 1 5 5 is greater than true 2 so this condition is true so we are not going to check this condition so answer would be y is equal to 2 if the Condition is true. We would be incrementing the value of x, so x would become five plus one six. Similarly, for z is equal to four, okay, so we would be incrementing the value of x seven seven x is equal to seven seven is greater than two. So this condition is true. So we would won't be executing this. So y would remain two. If the condition is true, then increment the value of x by one, so x would become eight. Okay, so it would be less than equal to five zero one two three four. So answer would be y is equal to two and x is equal to eight. So this is the answer. X is equal to two and y is equal to eight. Okay, A is the answer. Next question. In built-in uh, a built-in class in Java which is used to handle all exception, this question was asked in 2017 also. So it is the throwable class. Throwable class is a super class of all the exceptions and error classes. Okay, so it is answer is throwable. 
okay you have to remember this next what is the right way to declare a copy constructor of a class if the name of the class is my class okay uh, for making a copy constructor you have to pass address as argument so it would be b b should be answer okay it is answer next okay this is 10th what would be the output of the following c program okay same this type of question uh, it is based on macro it is a macro question same this type of question was asked in 2017 also so there are chances of repeating the questions okay so we have a macro defined here which would calculate the square of x that is x square it would calculate x square okay and here we are calling we have initialized uh, we have uh, sorry we have integer variable a and we have b we have to calculate the square of uh, b plus 2 so we have used b plus 2 over here but let's see what happens actually uh, when we expand this in case of x we would be putting b plus 2 okay in this so we would be getting b plus 2 into b plus 2 so okay it would be, this would be our macro expansion so in this case what we would be having we would be having 3b 2 so see this has a higher priority so what the compiler would do is it would multiply this first because the priority of multiplication is greater than that of addition so it would be 2b plus b it is 3b plus 2 okay so the value of b is 4 3 in, 3 into 4 plus 2 so 3 4 is a 12 plus 2 14 is our answer okay but what should be answer answer should be b plus 2 is 6 6 is a 36 should be answer but uh, with the macro expansion it work like this so the answer would be 14 okay it is 14 next question which of the following is true with respect to uh, reference to uh, respect to reference okay this is uh, the reference can never be null this is true okay uh, a reference it must uh, point to some address it can never be null next consider a following code segment okay uh, we have a class while and a loop public void we have a loop uh, we have a function named loop and this we have a while loop and it is printing something okay so we have to see what are the error okay there is a syntax error in line one Okay, in line 1 there is no error because uh, this is the x specifier this is a keyword see this while it is not a keyword because here the w is capital so there is no problem in this line there are syntax errors on line 1 and 6 so there is no error in 1 so this is cancelled out this is cancelled out there is syntax error in line number 8 line number 8 is uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 uh, there is no syntax error over here because it would just increment the value of x and print it there is no syntax error it is just concatenation it would print so this is also false there is a syntax error in line number 6 so line number 6 is while 1 ok so there is a syntax error because the error would be it is an integer ok so it would be uh, the answer here should be boolean so the error would be it cannot convert an integer into boolean that type of error would be there so the answer is there is a syntax error in line number six okay next how many lines of output does the following c code produce so we are talking about how many lines of output that the following c code produce okay let's see okay this is like how many times the sum uh, would be um, printed okay so let's see what uh, is the answer so, okay the first for the first iteration so we have i is equal to 2 j is equal to 1 sum is initialized uh, to 0 there is a condition in the while loop if it is there then j is incremented and uh, this is some code it is executed so let's see what is there for the first iteration we have here I'll write i is equal to 2 and j is equal to 1 okay for the first iteration i by j i by j so i is 2 2 by 1 we have would be comparing 2 by 1 is 2 by 1 greater than 0 0.01 yes the statement is true then what i would be doing i would be incrementing the value of j by 1 j was 1 the uh, one initialized to 1 so j plus uh, 1 plus 1 is j would be 2 okay after initializing j would be 2 sum is equal to sum plus sum is sum was initialized to 0 so sum is equal to sum 
plus i by j so my i is still my i is 2 and j is also 2 so it is 2 by 2 so sum becomes 1 okay so in the second iteration like this we would be checking in the second iteration my i is 2 and j is also j is also 2 so 1 by 1 is greater than 0 0.001 so this is true now uh, j would be incremented by 3 it is 3 uh, then sum sum would become sum is 1 plus i by j i is 2 and j is 3 it is 1.5 okay like so when we solve all this the answer would be 11 that is 11 times the code uh, number of lines 11 number of lines would be there so answer would be 11 over here okay so this is uh, d should be our answer okay, next question what is the output of the following c program okay so we have uh, a integer which is called shifty and shifty is initialized to 0 5 7 0 and there is a right shift of 4 and there is a left shift of 6 okay see this is the right shift and this is left shift this is right and this is left and we have to print the value of shifty okay let's see whenever a integer variable although it is an integer variable okay uh, whenever an integer variable is preceded by a 0 then that means this is an octal number okay here also it is percent 0 here also we are printing an octal number only okay so let's see that is 0 5 7 0 it is an octal number so octal number can be write as a digit of 3 so I would be writing it as uh, th digits of 3 only that is 0 0 0 1 1 1 and 5 would be written as 1 0 1 and this 0 is 0 0 0 so this is my octal number okay so what we have to do is we have to right shift it by 4 okay when we right shift it by 4 means first right shift second shift third shift fourth shift removing with these things so what would be having we would have 1 1 1 this 1 1 1 and here we were at 0 1 0 and 0 0 0 so it is the right shift okay and after performing the right shift on this number we have to left shift it by 6 so left shift means adding 6 zeros so it would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 I have added 6 zeros and we have what it is 1 1 1 1 0 sorry 1 1 1 and 1 0 0 so this is our answer so answer would be 0 0 7 and 2 it is 2 7 0 0 in octal so the answer is D D should be answer okay next question if only uh, one memory location is to be reserved for a class variable okay uh, for every class variable one memory location no matter how many objects are instantiated the variable should be declared as it should be a static variable it is a definition of the static variable so the variable should be declared as a static variable next question uh, the following three C language statement is equivalent to which single statement okay see what we are doing is I'm incrementing the value of y okay so it is if it is incrementing the value of y so it can be so we are writing it as it can be y plus plus or plus plus y okay now what I am doing is I am just uh, adding z is equal to x plus y so what I am doing is I am incrementing the value of y before the statement so so the uh, y should be used before or after incrementing because y is incremented before the statement okay and x is incremented after the statement so before uh, incrementing x x should be used so there would be post increment for x and pre increment for y okay that means x is used as such and after that it is incremented because this this statement is written after this and y is used after incrementing because the statement is before this so this should be our answer so which is this post increment of y and pre increment of x so this should be our answer okay b is our answer okay which of the following is not represented in a subroutine activation recall frame for a stack based programming languages okay uh, so we would first see so what are represented in the subroutine activation record frame 
okay so first arguments and parameters they are they are represented in the subroutine active activation thing so they are not in the option okay second a link to caller stack frame that is a dynamic link should be there so it is it is also there not in the option but you have to remember all this they are very important we have to remember all this third in a language with nested subroutines a mechanism for accessing non locals which could be one of a static link a pointer to the most recent frame at this level or the whole display so it is there should be an access to non locals so this is true okay so in an activation frame record d should be there next uh, the written address that is written address is option b written address should be there next local variables should be there the values of local variables should be there it should be local variables values okay next copies of callee save registers if needed should be there temporary should be there unspilled register should be there so heap area is not there in subroutine actuate activation record so it is not represented so it is heap area is the answer okay so this was all about these questions uh, thank you for watching please subscribe to our channel if you haven't